Welcome to another of my eBiology teacher podcasts. I'm Doc Miller, and today we are talking all about plants. Plants, plants, plants. Now, I realize that plants may not be the most exciting subject in the world. I mean, for most people, plants just sit there, right? But plants are incredibly important and they're incredibly complex too so it's important for us to understand them not to mention the fact that plants play a substantial role when we start talking about environmental science and ecology so we really have to understand what plants are what they do uh, sort of their inner workings if you will so um, again this may not be the most exciting thing you may not be ah oh, yay plants but it is important and I'm gonna try to make it fun so let's go ahead and look at what we're gonna be talking about mostly what we're gonna be talking about is how we classify plants. How are they similar and how are they different? If you've listened to the taxonomy podcast, then this should go sort of in order and you kind of kind of start to get it because we're going to kind of separate things uh, based on their similarities or their differences. So let's go ahead uh, and get started. Uh, what we're going to talk about is uh, plants that are either vascular or non-vascular. That's the first division. You see, all plants are a part of the kingdom plantae, or the plant kingdom, and we classify them uh, initially by one simple thing. Either they have vascular tissue, or they don't, okay? Non-vascular plants don't have vascular tissue, and what we mean by vascular tissue is tissue that allows us to take water up to the different parts of the plant. They don't have real roots or stems or even true leaves. Vascular plants, however, do have these vessels that are used for transporting water up and down uh, the, the, uh, the plant to the leaves and back. Uh, they also have true roots, true stems, and they do have true leaves. So let's first look at one of these categories. Let's look at the non-vascular plants. Well, these include mosses. Uh, liverworts and hornworts, mosses obviously being the most common, uh, they grow generally by a body of water or somewhere that's really excessively wet all the time. Uh, they are kind of considered the more primitive of plant, they're kind of the, the missing link between plants and algae, algae being the singular single-celled uh, organism, protists, um, and plants being multicellular, but they, they kind of have a lot of uh, common, common themes there. Uh, Mosses do not, or, or non-vascular plants for that matter, do not produce uh, seeds. They don't reproduce by using seeds. They use spores. And uh, they don't have vessels, obviously, because that's their name. Non-vascular means they don't have vessels. Um, so they have to be very small because if they're very big, then the water can't work its way up to the different parts of the plant. So they have to be very small. So one example of a non-vascular plant would be moss. And I'm going to show you right here. This is moss, okay? Notice how small, how tiny that is, right? Um, this shows us that uh, that uh, the plant has to be really small because if, if it were any bigger, then the water wouldn't get to it. And you'll notice that it's sitting in a little bucket of water here just because that's more like its natural environment. It would be sitting next to a creek bed or something like that. Now, what you didn't see is uh, the spores and spores would be on a, like a little stem that would come up and there would be a little little node at the end of it that, uh, that encased the spores and that would break open and sending spores and then those spores would turn into to new plants. The reason why that one isn't having spores is because it's been really hot and really dry lately. So these plants know if it's hot and it's dry then my spores probably aren't going to survive so they don't produce spores. They're going to produce spores when the environment is good for it. And it recently hasn't been that great. Okay, so that's non-vascular plants. Before we consider vascular plants, we need to understand what vascular really means. There are two types of vessels in a plant. Um, there are xylem, which are really big tubes that go from the root all the way up to the different parts of the plant, and they carry water from the ground up. Uh, they will contain some dissolved nutrients, but their job really is to be the water haulers. And that's really important, obviously, because plants have to have water for survival. Phloem, on the other hand, are smaller tubes, but instead of only running in one direction, a phloem can run in multiple directions. So we can have phloem taking uh, sugar made in the leaves through photosynthesis back to the trunk of a tree where it can be stored. And when the leaves need more sugar, they can bring the sugar back by that same phloem so it can go in multiple directions. But xylem and phloem tend to be together in what are called vascular bundles. So they will, they will occur in these little bundles together throughout the stem. 
All right. So let's take a look at uh, some non or some vascular plants. It's important to note that we're going to go ahead and make another division. So we started out with plants, and we break it up into vascular and non-vascular. Well, now we're going to take vascular plants and break it down into ones that produce seeds and ones that don't. Seedless vascular plants uh, do have vessels, just like any other vascular plants, which allows them to grow bigger than their non-vascular cousins, but they don't produce seeds. They actually produce spores, much like the non-vascular plants. Fern is an example of a seedless vascular plant. Ferns have vessels, but they don't have seeds. Here's a beautiful fern frond that you can see here, really pretty. If I turn it to the back, you can see those little nodes on the back side. Those are spore cases, and inside there are baby plants. That's right, little plants, little ferns just waiting to be uh, sent out to repopulate the world. Now, if you've ever seen a patch of ferns, you know that it kind of starts in one place and they just kind of spread. Well, the reason is, is as these spores bust open, they're going to fall to the ground and then they're going to grow next door. So they just sort of spread like that. That's one thing about these seedless vascular plants that you'll see. So this is a fern. It is an example of a seedless vascular plant and you can see the spores on the back side. Now, <clears throat> what about seeded plants? Well, if it were that easy, right? No, vascular seeded plants, number one, are very complex, but number two, have to be divided into yet another category. So we have plants, vascular, non-vascular. Vascular plants are seeded and non-seeded. Seeded plants are broken down into how their, the, their seeds are produced. You have gymnosperms. Gymnosperms have exterior seeds that are in cones. Okay, so obviously pine would be uh, a gymnosperm. The other category is angiosperm, and another word for angiosperm is flowering plants because angiosperms produce flowers and fruit, and inside the fruit lie the seed. So gymnosperms have exterior seeds, where angiosperms have interior seeds that are protected by some kind of fruit. Now, it's not necessarily a fruit that we eat, but it certainly is a fruit. So plants. Vascular and non-vascular, vascular. Seeded and non-seeded, seeded, gymnosperm and angiosperm. However, angiosperms oh, can be divided again into monocots and dicots. And that is the next thing we gotta take a look at. So, let's look at monocots first. Monocot, the word mono means one. Cot refers to a cotyledon. Well, if we talk about a cotyledon, we're talking about the meat of a seed. Okay, this is a corn seed, right? It's one big piece. And what a cotyledon is basically is inside this little piece of corn is a tiny little plant embryo, a little baby, baby plant, right? And the cotyledon is the food source for that plant as it starts to grow. Now, once it gets mature, it's gonna be able to produce its own food like any other plant. But right now, it needs a little help, uh, much like a chicken. You know, a chicken has an egg, and the chicken grows in the egg, and the yolk is actually its little food sack. It's what helps it, it helps it grow. So the cotyledon is basically the yolk of a seed. This cotyledon comes in one big chunk, and that's a monocot, hence the name monocot, one cotyledon. The veins of a leaf of a monocot are generally parallel veined. And what I mean by that is this is some Tradescantia. It's a, a type of plant. If I show it really close, you can see little parallel lines that run up the leaf, right? That is our veins that we were talking about. So this is obviously a vascular plant. But notice that they are run up and down. They're running parallel. That is a telltale sign of a monocot. Another thing, if you look on your screen, I'm gonna go ahead and put the mouse over there so you can see where the little hand is. Notice right here that the vascular bundles, that's where all the, the xylem and phloem are, are sort of bunched around together. Just kind of randomly about, okay? They don't, they don't have really a pattern. So they got scattered uh, uh, bundles. Another way to tell a monocot is that its leaves generally occur in patterns of three. So if you see this flower here, uh, it has six petals. 
so it's probably monococcus at the division of three. Uh, irises, uh, lilies, tulips, uh, bananas, pineapples, uh, a lot of tropical plants are monocots, okay? And that makes sense because if you look at the Tratoscantia, which I just showed you, that looks very tropical because it's got those really long, thin leaves. Those long, thin leaves are generally from a monocot, all right? Now, dicots. Dicots have two cotyledons. Now, you're probably familiar with one right off the bat, a peanut. If a peanut's a, a seed, right, and if you take a peanut, you can easily break it into two little halves. Well, that's two cotyledons. The same is true of a bean, right? If we break this bean, right, in that middle part, it would break into two uh, almost identical halves. Those are two cotyledons. Another thing about a uh, dicot, and I got a little philodendron here to show you, their veins are not parallel, but they are netted. And if you look closely, you can see how those just start to branch off that center. Now, they may look a little parallel, but notice that there's that center rib there, right? And the veins come off of it, and that is parallel net venation, or excuse me, and, and that's what we'd call it. But the net is what's important. This is netted venation, and that makes this a dicot. Okay, so let's take a look at the two together and see if we can see the difference. All right, we've got the Tratoscantia here. Notice the parallel lines up and down, and then we have the Philodendron, which has those sort of net looking, and that's obviously a dicot, monocot, dicot, monocot. All right, now, a couple other things. Flower petals on a dicot generally come in divisions of four or five. Well, what if it's 12? That's divisible by three and four. Is it a monocot or a dicot? You're going to have to use one of the other tricks to figure that out. But if you see the flower on the screen that's got five petals, it's a dicot. Beans are obviously an example. Lettuce, oaks, maples, elms, roses, carnations. Uh, most trees that have really broad leaves are going to be dicots because of the veins. They're going to have to branch out. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our objectives. Let me, uh, let me show you something real quick. I'm going to go grab something. You hang on tight there, okay? We're going to do a little graphic organizer here to help us organize our thoughts when it comes to plants. All right, he's gone crazy. Yes, indeed. Okay, we start out with plants. Plants. Okay, now plants can be divided into two categories, right? We have vascular and non-vascular. Yay, plants, vascular and non-vascular. But I can take vascular plants and I can divide them again into, ta-da, seated and non-seated plants. Vascular and non-vascular. Vascular breaks to seated and non-seated. I know my handwriting is just awful, isn't it? All right. If I go one more time, I can take my seated plants, yes, seated plants right there, and break them into gymnosperm and angiosperm or forgot my name angiosperm right gymnosperm angiosperm lastly if i want to divide again my angiosperms which are flowering plants can be broken down into monocot and dicot. By the way, while looking at my writing, you can now tell why I do all my notes by typing, because you would never be able to read that. All right, so let's go through our objectives and see if we can tell a little about. It. First off, plants. Differentiate between vascular and non-vascular. Well, vascular plants have vessels, meaning xylem, which carries water from the roots all the way up, and phloem, which carries uh, nutrients here and there. Non-vascular plants don't have vessels and therefore have to be very small because water has to get to the plant somehow. Vascular plants can be divided into two categories, seeded and non-seeded. Seeded plants produce seeds. Non-seeded plants reproduce by using spores. Okay? Now, seeded plants can be broken down into two categories. 
Gymnosperms and angiosperms. Angiosperms are flowering plants. Gymnosperms are non-flowering plants. Gymnosperms produce seeds in cones. Angiosperms produce seeds in fruits. And finally, angiosperms can be divided into monocots and dicots. Monocots have one cotyledon with parallel veins and flowers with petals of multiples of three. Dicots are two cotyledons. The veins are netted, and their flowers can have petals in multiples of four or five. There it is, right there. See? Yeah, pull it back. All right, so I hope this has helped. Hello. Uh, and I hope that you get something out of it. Uh, this is going to be important because when we start talking about plants, where they survive and what they can do all depends on these little categories, right? So. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me, and I hope that you now know everything that you wanted to know about plants, but were afraid to ask. See you next time.